Oh, there, maybe it's the unmute. Okay, so we're uh, gonna read the um, proclamation. The first one is the Bruderheim Meteorite. You just have to start the video, I think, there at the bottom. Here we go. Looks like we're live again, and we're just reading the uh, Bruderheim Meteorite Day Proclamation. On March 4th, 1960, at approximately 1.06 a.m., a meteorite landed in close proximity to the town of Bruderheim. Nearly 700 meteorite fragments were found with a total aggregate weight of over 300 kilograms, the largest recorded meteorite fall in Canada. In recognition of this monumental occurrence, I, Mayor Carl Hauk, do hereby proclaim March 4th, 2022 to be Bruderheim Meteorite Day in the town of Bruderheim. And I'll sign that to proclamation off. And we have another important proclamation, a national, International Women's Day proclamation. Whereas the town of Bruderheim recognizes the importance of women in business, and whereas the goal of International Women's Day is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women, whereas the day also marks a call to action for accelerating women's equality. Therefore, I, Carl Hoke, Mayor, do hereby proclaim the March 8th, 2022 to be International Women's Day in the town of Bruderheim and encourage all citizens to participate in International Women's Day activities. Thank you. And we look for a motion from council to approve the uh, two proclamations. Councillor Wayne. The town council approved the Meteorite Day proclamation and the International Women's Day Pro proclamation. Thank you for that motion, Councilor Wayne. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion from Council? Um, I would just like to add uh, thanks to uh, our administration for always bringing these forward and uh, allowing us the opportunity to um, put forth important proclamations. Uh, in fact, the International Women's Day, I think, is a really important one to recognize. So uh, any other comments, questions, or concerns before I call for a vote? Haven't heard none, call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So when we move on to a letter, we have a Western Economic Diversification Grant, playground letter from our MP, Shannon Stubbs. Bear with me for a minute. Um, February 16th, 2022 from Shannon Stubbs, MP of Lakeland, Re Western Economic Diversification Grant. MP Stubbs wished she could be here tonight, but the House of Commons is sitting, so she is in Ottawa, but wanted to share this message. Good evening, Mayor Hauk and Council. I would rather be out in Lakeland and there with you in Bruderheim than in Ottawa tonight but I am thankful to be able to send a quick message. I want you to know how much I always enjoy every opportunity I have to come out to Bruderheim for many reasons. One being that your community is quite unique, being situated in both a strong agricultural community 
and the industrial heartland. And another reason is because with every new opportunity that comes to your community, Riverheim seems to always come forward to, with such passion, energy, and innovation to think outside of the box, to partner with several groups to advance projects like you did with the Carol Moshmire Arena or your community clinic, and the dedication and enthusiasm of the mayor, council, and your staff is undeniable. As Member of Parliament for Lakeland, I am honoured to be able to congratulate you tonight on your successful application for a grant to build a natural playground. Through Western Economic Diversification Canada, I'm proud to announce your community will receive $234,263 to develop this project. Congratulations again to your Council and all of your staff for your hard work. Sincerely, Shannon Stubbs. Uh, that's just amazing. Thank you to uh, Shannon Stubbs for all the work that she does for us in Bruderheim. And right now we will get a picture of the council with the check um, from the uh, donation or the grant, sorry. And we'll just move to the back of the room here now. Well, it's not every day that our council gets to receive a check like that for our community. And so very exciting. Thanks again to Shannon Stubbs and for administration for organizing this. <clears throat> now we can move on to adopting the minutes of the February 16th meeting. So we're looking for a motion from council to adopt the minutes from February 16th. Councilor Dana. I motion to adopt the minutes of February 16th, 2022. Thank you for that motion, Dana. And any comments, questions, or concerns with minutes from the February 16th meeting of council? Everybody's had a chance to read the minutes. Okay, so we'll call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion to adopt the minutes from the February 16th meeting? And the motion's carried. So we can move on to number seven, council priorities. And we'll start with information requests. Um, Deputy Mayor Judy. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dana? Uh, just curious in regards to, I don't know if this is the proper thing to bring it up, but uh, for the soccer to, I don't know if we have to make up, if it's up to town council, but the soccer team, like soccer group wants to use the arena if it's for rainy, it's rainy outside. So I don't know if that's something I bring up here, if it's directly to council, but that was just brought to my attention. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Dana. Anything else? No, well, that's it. Okay, uh, Councillor Len. Yes, uh, I, I know we're all aware of what's been going on in the world these days. And I was watching things on television today and a request from the Minister of Foreign Affairs in, is in Poland right now. And uh, there's, a, there's a hard, it's really hard to get money for people for housing and food there. And uh, I'm thinking we should, this thing is gonna get worse before it'll ever get better. And uh, at this time we have a, a, a function coming up and I would like to see the money from that function. Instead of going to that function, that money sent to the federal government, they're, they're handing out the money. There was on the, she made a, a huge plea 
to help the people. So I would like, I will make a motion that we cancel the mayor's dinner and send that money to help the, those people that extremely need the money. The things are really tough over there and uh, it's going to get a lot worse. Answer me. Is there any other place that, if this were to go, uh, to take the money from instead of doing the the mayor's dinner? Um, we'd have to ask the administration help for that one. Administration would have to review the budget and come back to council. At this point, there is no other place to take it from. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Deputy Mayor Judy. So if I remember correctly, for the, the mayor's supper, we weren't putting any money in. We were making the $5,000 to cover the event from the tickets that we sold. So there really isn't $5,000 there, right? We had to, but we had to sell tickets for the supper in order to make the supper go. Right. Yeah, right. I believe you're correct, Deputy so Mayor. There's no money there from there. So we'd have to ask administration to find the money somewhere. So um, maybe we could uh, ask if uh, Councillor Land would be willing to rescind that motion and uh, direct administration to um, look into the request to uh, uh, find some money to be able to send to Ottawa and then bring that back to Council for our decision. Well, I, I, if there is a line item of $5,000 that's still showing up in our, our finances and our budget, and I believe there's other costs occurring over and above the tickets. Uh, am I correct, uh, administration? Through, uh, through Mayor Hope to Councillor Filardo, there is no money in the budget right now for Mayor's Supper. It, we were doing ticket sales and doing some fundraising okay, then, at that time. Yeah, because I saw the line item for $5,000. And if that was there, I would I would really appreciate that money. But I, I mean, if if we, I don't know if we need to send 5,000 then, but I think we can at least look at a couple or $3,000 to show our support for the for the people there and uh, help them out to and make sure it goes to a, a worthy in a, a group to make sure that money does get to the right people's hands. That's a very important to me because if you give it to like uh, the Red Cross, they just take it in fees for their own pockets. Eh? So, but I mean, if it, it has, I truly believe we have to show our part in it. We're not in the gun business. We're not selling guns, but I think we can help them out, feed them, and house a little bit of them. Thank you. And I'll resend that motion. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. And then uh, would you uh, request the administration to look into a potential uh, other uh, dollars and then bring that back to council then? Uh, as I request administration to come back to see where we can squeeze a few nickels to send to the, to the, uh, uh, it's in Poland right now. That's where the government is right now. And I, she just said something. I didn't get the drift of where to send the money to. But they would tell, they would direct you of that. So I'll make the motion that, or no, I guess it's just a motion that the administration, the councillor requests that they, uh, we don't need a motion to look into what funds are available. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Len. Councillor Wayne. Not at this time. Councillor Ashley. Councillor George. Um, Councillor George, if you please turn your mic on. In regards to Councillor Florida's request, I think we should be looking at other avenues, maybe uh, reaching out to our community as a request. Uh, this way here, things may get along a little faster as far as the fundraising. Uh, uh, it is hard times also for our community and to uh, bring up money for, for that uh, out of our budget might be not the time. Okay, um, so when uh, the information comes back from administration on Councillor Len's request, and then we can debate uh, about the dollars at that time. Yeah. And um, if I understand what you're asking correctly, um, at that time, then we could ask the public if they want to donate as well, and then send the, the money along together as a whole. Is that what you're asking? 
Yeah, but right now I think time is a factor. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, I don't know how to say it, but one of the things that we're gonna to have to do is, you know, if they're, if they're in desperate need of help now, two weeks might be too late. Yeah, I, I, I really believe that that conflict is going to go longer than two weeks, Councillor George. Yeah, but thank you for that. Uh, any other inquiries, Councillor George? Okay. And um, for information requests, um, I just have a couple of things I wanted to. Oh, um, oh yeah, because George has signed up. Sorry, Councillor Ashley. I appreciate that. If we could get admin to. Um, just make sure that the ice times for our local hockey teams are scheduled correctly, that um, they're not showing up to a game to an empty rink, no attendant. This has happened three times um, on the weekends that um, there's nobody at the arena, the doors are locked, and this puts the games behind. And um, we just want to make sure that this isn't happening. Thank you, Councillor Ashley. Um, any other consular requests for uh, information requests? <clears throat> um, I was wondering if we could uh, look at the potential ideas here. Um, so in other communities, I've uh, realized that um, they recognize the centurions in their community. And as our population is uh, aging, there may be folks in our community that are pushing close to the 100 year mark. And, I'm just wondering if it's possible that we think about, a, that we don't have to institute anything right away, but think about a, a program where we could plant a tree or do some kind of ceremony or recognition for those folks that are turning 100 years old. And I, uh, I know that there's been some folks that have passed on recently that were close to the 100 year mark you know, from our community, but um, that was just a suggestion. And then um, the other one that I've heard about that's interesting is uh, there's programs in other communities where they have art in public places and uh, the uh, town puts uh, local artists um, crafts and wares on display in the community and they accept submissions from local artists for a chance to have their work displayed. And I'm just wondering if that's something that, you know, we have local artists in our community that uh, do all kinds of uh, crafts and painting and carvings and maybe that would be a way to help promote the artists in our community so it's just a suggestion and then the the last one I wanted to mention is uh, recently our council had uh, uh, emergency awareness uh, training or emergency management training and as part of that emergency management um, our town's ability to fight uh, fires especially if we had multiple fires or uh, uh, multiple uh, fire hydrants required to fight a fire. And with our current water reservoir and pumping system, um, we may be inadequate. And I'm, I'm wondering from that angle, if we want to uh, um, use that as part of our um, planning towards the water reservoir and pumping system issue that we have for our community to ensure that uh, we're, we're also looking at um, not just the need for more water flow for growth, but also for uh, emergency management. And, and the last thing that I have is, um, I don't imagine it's in the budget, but I'm just wondering if there's been any thought about attending the Fort Sask or Shared Park uh, Chamber of Commerce trade shows that are coming up. <clears throat> um, I'd be willing to volunteer to sit in a booth. Uh, for example, in the past, uh, we've been able to partner with other communities and not incur any kind of cost for our community to um, have uh, our, our town uh, um, partner with, uh, say, County Lamont or whomever, and, and uh, we, we could at least get our name out there to those trade shows and it doesn't cost anything. So I, I wanted to throw that suggestion out there. So that's my contribution and Deputy Mayor Judy. So you're mentioning the emergency management in our reservoir. What what do you want done with that? I didn't understand. <clears> so I know that our administration is planning and working towards a plan for the water reservoir. The, the original uh, estimate uh, was close to $3 million. And I know that they're working on a plan for a scaled down version that would still meet our needs. And 
I just wanted to uh, make sure that administration is also looking at it from the lens of uh, emergency management, because if uh, our community had any uh, fires where multiple hydrants are required, then we would be below the uh, threshold for what the fire hydrants are supposed to flow. So from that uh, angle, it uh, maybe changes things a little bit on how we're looking at it. It's not just about economic growth anymore. And, and that that was um, made made uh, awareness from for me from the emergency management training that we just had recently. So um, that's all that I had. And uh, program requests um, start with Councillor George. Any program requests? Nothing at this time. Thank you, Councillor George. Councillor Ashley. Nothing at this time. Uh, sorry about missing you the last time around, Councillor Wayne. Nothing at this time. Thanks. Councillor Lynn? Nothing at this time. Councillor Dana? Nothing at this time. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Judy? Nothing at this time. Okay, thank you. And now we can move on to 8.1 Privacy Policy, Gov 76. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Privacy Policy, Government 76, a revision. Uh, to update and revise information included in the Privacy Policy Government 76 that was approved in January 2016. Recommendation that Town Council approve the Privacy Policy Gov 76 as revised and presented on March 2nd, 2022. Council history, the Town of Bruderheim requires a Privacy Policy to set guidelines for the collection of personal information and approve this policy in January of 2016. The Town of Bruderheim is committed to protecting the personal information of its residents, taxpayers, and customers. The Town of Bruderheim will ensure that privacy protection is a core consideration in the design, implementation, and evolution of all town programs and services. The collection and disclosure of personal information may only be undertaken within the parameters of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, or the FOIP Act. The Town of Bruderheim will ensure that appropriate measures are in place to govern the collection and disclosure of personal information. Strategic plan priority areas, a community is educated on the responsibilities and limitations of council and administration, ongoing review of policies by administration for council approval. Other impacts, legal and alleged, Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, RSA 2000, Chapter F25 as amended. In summary, changes made to the policy include the following, changing the director title for administrative responsibility, changing the next review date, communication plan, administration will share the updated policy with staff, and enclosure was the existing policy as it was prior to bringing this new one tonight. Thank you very much. Uh Acting CAO Sherry. Um, so we're looking for a motion from council to approve the privacy policy. Uh, Councillor Wayne. The town council approved the pri privacy policy, Gov 76, is revised and presented on March 2nd, 2022. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council with that motion? Okay, everyone's had a chance to uh, go through it, so we'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So we move on to 8.2, flower and gift presentation policy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Flower and gift presentation policy, FIN 020. Uh, to present council with the amendments to the flower and gift presentation policy, FIN 020. Recommendation that town council approves the flower and gift presentation policy, FIN 020, as amended and presented on March 2nd, 2022. The flower and gift policy was previously amended by resolutions 45-2015 and resolution 162-2017. In 2015, the policy was revised to include council members, and in 2017, the revisions include the definition of an employee and council, recognizing wedding anniversary celebrations of 25 years or more, acknowledges significant birthdays, removed retirement and resignation information that is currently included in the employee recognition and awards policy. Strategic plan area, an opportunity to recognize significant celebrations of our residents. Other impacts is our policy, flower and gift presentation policy, FIN 070, to provide guidelines for recognition of special occasions and traumatic events. The revisions. Revisions made to this policy include changes to the administration responsibility, added director under definitions, section 1C, change the dollar amount from $50 to $75 to address increased costs in the purchase of flowers or gift baskets. 
Section 2B, change the dollar amount from $50 to $75 to address increase in cost to purchase costs associated with the purchase of a gift. Section 3, change the dollar amount from $50 to $75 for gift basket, flower arrangement, or donation to charity of one's choice. Section 3, change the wording for the contact from Director of Community Services to Director of Development and Legislative Services. Section 3, change the wording from Supervisor to Director in the last paragraph. Communication plan. This policy will be shared with staff and administration posted on our website so that our residents are aware of this opportunity for special occasion recognition. The enclosures are the existing flower and gift presentation policy and the proposed policy. And I would just like to say that um, we have experienced this year when we go to buy a gift basket for somebody, um, the costs have gone up and it's very difficult to buy anything for anybody for $50. And that's why we're bringing this policy forward. Thank you. Thank you, Acting CAO Sherry. So we're looking for a motion for flower and gift presentation policy. And the first hand that I saw was Councillor Lenz. Councillor Lenz. That the Town Council approve the flower and gift presentation policy, FIN 020, as revised and presented on March 2nd, 2022. Thank you, Councillor Lenz. Any comments, questions, or concerns <clears throat> with that motion? Um, I just like to highlight what it's in, what's in the policy for those that may be listening that uh, aren't aware. The uh, section under wedding anniversaries, so town residents celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary can request a gift from the town of Bruderheim congratulating them and will receive another gift on every 10th anniversary thereafter. And uh, the council would be presenting those um, to the um, uh, folks that are celebrating their anniversary. Also, um, town residents celebrating his or her 100th birthday can request a gift from the town of Bruderheim presented by the council. And I just wanted to make sure that folks were aware that that opportunity is out there. So uh, thanks for administration uh, uh, tuning this up. And um, any other comments, questions, or concerns with this motion? Having heard none, we'll call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So then we move on to 8.3 emergency management bylaw. Emergency management bylaw 032022. Report purpose to present council with an emergency management bylaw with changes recommended by Alberta Emergency Management Agency during the review of our municipal emergency plan. Recommendation that Town Council give first reading to bylaw 032022, the emergency management bylaw. Council history, emergency management bylaw 062021, received third reading by Council on June 17, 2021. This bylaw contained numerous revisions based on changes made to the Emergency Act in, 19, in 2020. Strategic plan priority areas, a healthy and vibrant community to ensure the municipality has an emergency plan for the community. Open and transparent governance and administration. Council is required to comply with the Emergency Management Act and fulfill the responsibilities assigned under the Act. Legislative and legal is the Emergency Management Act, Bylaw 062021, Emergency Management Bylaw, which is currently existing. In summary, the Town of Bruderheim underwent the annual emergency management audit of all documents on February 26, 2022. There was an audit on the emergency social services plan in the spring of 2021. Revisions made to the new bylaw include page two, section P, added a definition of an incident command post. Page two, Q, revised information on the first line. Page 531, new statement to cl clarify it does not require three members of the emergency advisory committee to declare a state of a local emergency. One, may, one member can declare it. Page 638, added information about pandemic state of a local emergency time lapse. Communication plan, this bylaw will be posted on the Town of Bruderheim website and placed in the emergency management manuals. And enclosures are the emergency management bylaw 06-2021 and the new proposed bylaw. Um, what I would just uh, mention at one point in time, and on page five, section 31, uh, the declaration of just one member, it was brought to our attention that we do have um, the, um, the council as our agency. Um, but if two people were out of town and, a, and an emergency happened, there isn't the ability and we cannot have somebody else step in to make that decision. So that was one that he really wanted us to make a change right away. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Acting CAO Sherry. So we're looking for a motion for emergency management bylaw 
uh, Councilor Ashley. That the town council give first reading to bylaw 03-2022, the emergency management bylaw. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Councilor Lynn. Well, that and I'm only saying this because when you have one person responsible for the the costs and the actions to the community, and if some you know, we all think differently. Emergency to one person, and emergency to another person is two different things sometimes. And if you leave that position to one person and they don't fully understand what emergency is or stuff, then all of a sudden we're going to incur costs and activate something that we cannot control. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor Len. I think that they would be acting in concert with the uh, um, CAO of the day and um, I don't think that'd be something that we'd be taking lately. So um, administration, it looks like it wants to uh, interject. Uh, through Mayor Hope to Councillor Filardo, in our bylaw that we have at the moment, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, additional um, items in the in the uh, uh, bylaw to ensure that council is made fully aware of what's happening. The uh, council members appointed to the emergency management committee are the ones that would be meeting with uh, the deputy director of emergency management and reporting back to council. So council would already be aware that there was a, an issue or something that was of concern and would be well prepared with information with respect to what was occurring. So if it came to a situation where we had, had to make a, a decision fairly quickly, we already have within the CAO bylaw and through another policy that we have that the CAO can um, have a certain amount of money expended right away and it's $50,000. And then after that, she has to come to council to get further approval. So those things are already in place to help with this. Thank you, uh, Acting CAO Sherry. Uh, Councilor Wayne. I was just gonna say that uh, I'm sure there's a, it comes on advice of, of other people rather than just one person deciding at that moment. Um, so I, I, I think it'd be safe to say that it's not just one person making the decision, it's on advice of from higher ups, I would think so. Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Any other com uh, deputy mayor? Yeah, so it's in consultation with the director of emergency management as well. So Ian is going to be the one that we're going to be looking forward to if he's on that particular day or one of those members before we really call it. It's more just because the way the committee is set up, its council is the committee. So that's kind of the, the reasoning, which I understand and I agree with. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with the motion? Um, I just wanted to say thanks to administration for uh, doing the audit, and I'm sure these were things that uh, Ian flagged for you, guys, for you folks, and thank, thanks for all the hard work and extra effort that it takes to make that happen. So if there's no other comments, questions, or concerns, I'll call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we can move on to uh, reports. Uh, looking for a motion to receive the mayor and council committee reports as information. Deputy Mayor. I make a motion that town that council receive the mayor and council committee reports as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Councilor Wayne. Just a couple things. This new format, does that create more work for you guys? Through Mayor Hope to Councillor uh, um, Oleko. No, it doesn't. Okay. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. Um, Does it create any extra work for Council? No, nope. I don't okay. think so. I, I shouldn't create. Why would it create yeah, more? No, I'm just asking. Thanks. And you uh, had something else? Yeah. I, I just in regards to all this, I had an email from um, Jill, Jill, Jillian, and Claire from Resilient Rules. Um, they are getting in touch with uh, Fort Air Partnership and going to work with, with them on, I guess, on a couple other projects they're working on. So we're going to get in contact with them and join a couple of meetings to see what it's about. And uh, hopefully they can kind of work together and on this project that they're working on. So just wanted to put that out there. Great. Thanks. That's from the Fort Air Partnership board that you're serving on. Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Um, I just wanted to mention that on the mayor report that I had provided, there was a couple of meetings that uh, w was upcoming because I had written a report on February 23rd. And so I, I attended the F February 24th John S. Patuk Water Commission meeting. 
and at that meeting it was discussed uh, plan going forward and um, we had a meeting with the subcommittee uh, of the John S. Patuk and the Northeast Commission and there was a plan brought forward and if it's accepted then that would help start the resolution uh, path for both commissions. If it's not going to be accepted, then uh, we may be headed to arbitration. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is on March 1st, uh, Deputy Mayor, myself and uh, CAO Patty met with uh, Edmonton Mayor and his um, right hand lady, uh, former Mayor of Mournville, uh, Lisa Holmes. It was a very productive meeting and some interesting things came through it. And uh, um, Mayor Sohi said he was very interested in attending our Mayor Supper. So we'll, we'll see if he actually can, can attend or not. He's a pretty busy guy, but he was very accommodating and very uh, genuine and, and easy to talk to. And, and he recognized that there was some things that we could potentially work on and there was some takeaways for our CAO. So I thought it was pretty good. Um, and this Friday, I'll be attending the AIHA meeting at uh, Fort Saskatchewan. And it'll be the first AIHA meeting in about two years that'll be in person. So just wanted to mention that uh, extra information. So if there's nothing further on the uh, council committee reports, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Now we're looking for a motion for the chief administrator uh, officer report to receive this information. Somebody willing to make that motion? Deputy Mayor Judy. I make a motion that council receive the chief administrator officer report as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns with the CAO report? Councilor Wayne. Uh, not a question. I just wanted to say, uh, um, I'm sure it's been a, a tough go, I think, in the last little while with, um, I shouldn't say tough go, but it's been a little more hectic. Um, so I just want to say thank you to admin for, for hanging in there and, 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 and uh, making sure that our town is still moving forward and, um, so I just wanted to put that out there to say thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wayne. I certainly agree with you. Any other comments, questions, or concerns with the CAO report? Okay, we'll call for a vote then. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we're looking for a motion for the correspondence and information items. Somebody willing to make that motion, Councillor Wayne? Thank you. Um, one thing I would like to add that uh, just came to me just before the meeting this evening, um, Lamont County and the town of Lamont is going to do a flag raising in support of Ukraine at 1.30 on March 4th across the street from the town office in the town of Lamont and we're invited. Uh, the mayor from Lamont phoned to uh, invite us. So anybody that can make it this Friday at 1.30 at uh, Lamont, they're more than welcome to attend. So I just want to make sure that everybody heard that. And hearing no other issues with the correspondence, uh, call for a vote. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. So now we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Wayne. I make a motion to adjourn and go home. Thank you for that motion. Anyone opposed to the motion? And the motion's carried. Don't forget the fire There's a